We want to welcome the 323 house churches locally, nationally, and internationally, and the 13,000, 13,145 locations who took the time to watch our four celebration services. You might say, well, you might be watching us for the first time this week, and here in Chilliquin, Oregon, City spreading discipleship around the world. Um, this service, when it gets posted on Sunday night, uh, this message will go around the world at the speed of light. Mm -hmm. Whenever somebody posts something on YouTube and accesses it, it's 0.22 seconds. So by the time they hit that, it comes back, comes on their phone or their computer, it took 0.22 seconds. So right now, God is moving at the speed of light, even through what man's created, the internet. Yeah, time is short. Even if the Lord tarries 10 years, things are moving quickly. We had a gentleman, like I said, contact us from Spain, and that message went out, touched his heart. He said, Randy, I'm opening a house church. I'm going to start reaching out to my friends and family using the video. Amen? Amen. So this message will go around the world at the speed of light. So I want to give the house churches a little scripture. I shared this last week, but it's a great foundational scripture for the house churches, and it's Matthew 18, 20. Matthew 18, 20. What you need to realize to open a house church, it's you and one other person. And this scripture will back that up. Uh, in the majority of the world now, you will never see a brick and mortar building built in a lot of these areas. But all of them have homes. Mm -hmm. They have homes, they've got cell phones, they've got computers. And so Matthew 18, 20, for where two or three gather in my name, there I am with them. So when two of you get together in your home or anywhere, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are there with you. So there's actually, with two of you, there's three more. Five, y'all. Yeah. Amen? Amen. If you have started or are going to open a house church, put the heart emoji on our Facebook page so we can be praying for you. Use the celebration service. Use the altar call, have a discussion. It's that easy. It's, it's that easy. Uh, so we can be praying for you. Also use our new video, One Star Fish at a Time, to evangelize. That little four minute video, you can send it forward to people and I guarantee you it will touch their heart. Amen? Amen. So uh, 657 people have viewed uh, the starfish message in the last 12 days. God is moving at the speed of light to bring in the harvest. Mm -hmm. And like I said, um, YouTube, David Wilkerson opened a house church. David Wilkerson was probably the largest prophetic voice to Christianity in the church America's ever seen. Many of you have never probably heard of David Wilkerson, but before he passed away, he was really warning the church. And like I said, once you get David Wilkerson on there, put your seatbelt on. You know, he, he's not on to make you happy or make you feel good. So have somebody make you happy and feel good before he slaps the snot out of you, okay? The visitors are going, oh my goodness, what did you bring us to? It's, you'll be okay. We might never see you again, but you'll be okay. It's all right. So David Wilkerson opened a house church, but there's hundreds and hundreds of messages on YouTube by David Wilkerson. All right, that was the appetizer. Now we're going to get into the message. And the title of my message tonight is Appeal, A-P-P-E-A-L. We're going to kind of go back into 2 Corinthians, and we're going to start in 2 Corinthians 5.20. And if you missed last week's message, you're going to kind of be behind. So after tonight, go back on YouTube 
watch last week's message and get caught up. So we're going to be in 2 Corinthians 5.20. And always remember the house churches, even if they're not using the Saturday night service, you can always ask a question. Even if you're at a house church that's doing a curriculum or something else, you can always say, hey, Randy said this crazy thing on Saturday. <coughs> They're going to say, which crazy thing did Randy say? You've got to be specific. But you can always ask a question, even at the house churches that aren't studying the message mm -hmm. from Saturday. 2 Corinthians 5.20. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God is winning the world through you. Amen. Everything God wants to do has to operate through you and what you say and what you do. Appeal is a big deal. Amen. Amen. So I looked up this scripture in the Message Bible. I'm just going to read to you. It's the same verse, different translation. It says, we are Christ's representatives. God uses us to persuade men and women to drop their differences and enter into God's work of making things right between them. You've got to start dropping your differences. Many of us are hung up on something from five years ago. We're hung up on something from 10 years ago. 20 years ago. And, and all of a sudden it puts this wedge between us and people. Sean, somebody heard us in our past. They changed our identity. So now whenever we get around people, we're looking for the boogeyman. We don't even expect to see anything good in you. We're waiting to see the negative. Yeah. 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 Uh, well, we have some angelic beings here tonight. <laughs> this group. So I'm going to talk to the camera now. <laughs> I love it when they just look at me and go, is that coming out of his mouth? <laughs> yes. So same, same verse. <clears throat> Making things right between them. We are speaking for Christ himself now. You are talking for God. You, when you get saved and born again, the Holy Spirit comes on inside of you. The Bible says you are not your own anymore. You're not your own anymore. When you get filled with the Holy Spirit, Tony, now we speak for God. Amen. 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 And Pete might say, you know, well, Randy, I don't want to speak for God. <laughs> Now, I know Pete can handle that. That's why I switched to him, right? Because Pete's mature enough, you can use him as an illustration. But you are designed to speak for God. Pete, when he got saved and he humbled himself, got filled with the Holy Spirit deposit, it's no longer Pete should be alive. If we hear Pete bawling and squalling out by some backo because one of the hoses just broke, we hope that that guy died. Amen. 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 <laughs> but if we hear the old Pete, see, I've known Pete a long time. And I've been in a hole when he's running the backo over my head. <laughs> so I hope that's when the new Pete's here. Right. He probably doesn't remember that. But you get what I'm saying. You speak for God. Amen. They say, Randy, how can we grieve the Holy Spirit? How can we quench the Holy Spirit? When all of a sudden you're saying things that are devaluing you. Oh no, I was saying it about them. No, 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 no. Whenever you're devaluing someone else, you're devaluing yourself first. Mm -hmm. yes. Because when you devalue someone in what you say, death is actually coming out of us, Jack. That's right. Would you agree, Jack? It doesn't mean you're a bad person. It just means you got bad breath. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> you, your, your mouth is toxic. Remember, I'm not here to make you happy. I'm not here to even make you come back. Trust me, you come to this service, you got to want to be here. Because you will become uncomfortable one way or another. That's not my motive. It, it just, it happens. We are speaking for Christ himself now becomes friends with God, become friends with God. He's already a friend with you. See, we're supposed to be appealing to people. God loves you. God values you. But see, if you scare somebody into getting saved, you're going to hell. You're going to hell. That will be a fear-based decision. They'll always be afraid. But if you get people saved because someone loves them unconditional, there will never be any fear. Because we know His love for us. That's right. When we speak, it lets people know God has a work for them to do. That young lady that was cleaning my teeth and we started talking, you can't talk when sharp instruments are in your mouth <laughs> or some suction device that you have no idea where that goes. <laughs> I hope it isn't recirculated or something. <laughs> You know, when I was little and hadn't gone to the dentist yet, they'd always tell me, Randy, they got these big bicycle pedals at the end, and the faster you pedal, the faster the drill goes. <laughs> Don't do that to your children, please. When we speak, it lets people know God has a work for them to do. This lets them know God is their friend. See, people aren't expecting us to be fired up. They're not expecting any passion. Ooh, ooh, I'm a Christian. Be like me. I already am. Oh, that fired up Patty. I think I... And she's, she, and she's 80. Yeah. And I saw some daylight. <laughs> See, you guys don't realize you just come waltzing into church and all. Yeah, yeah, maybe I'll pay attention. I come here as serious as a heart attack. Yeah. Yeah. I've been waiting all week to get here. <laughs> when you think over 13,000 locations in the next four weeks, I better be on it. See, when you take a week off, you take a month off, you take some time off, you, you lose it. Yeah. Yeah. I train people for a living. Physical training, mental training. If you take one week off from exercise, you lose a month. Yes. And boy, in Christianity, you take a break. You get way behind. Yeah. Iron sharpens iron. So let's go to James. We were talking about that we need to let people know that God is their friend. God is their friend. So let's go to James 2.23. James 2.23. Sometimes I just got to let that out. It's like a pressure cooker. I used to a lot of times say boom real loud. I think I blew up three lapel mics in like six months. That poor little diaphragm in there, that's why I had to switch to these bad boys. That diaphragm and that little lapel mic, like Mickey Mouse or something. Just beep. James 2.23. Missy knows I'm blowing them up. James 2.23. And the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness and he was called God's friend. Amen. Man, Mike, can you imagine if we could wrap our mind around that God views us as his friends? The world is waiting for you to manifest how good a friend you are with Jesus. 
Let's go back to 2 Corinthians 5.21. You know, the attention span of an adult in America is seven seconds. So some of you, it, you're, you're fighting it right now. You're fighting it hard and you're doing a good job. 2 Corinthians 5.21. We just read 2 Corinthians 5.20. So we're going to read 2 Corinthians 5.21 and see if it's similar about this righteousness. 2 Corinthians 5.21, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. So it was accounted to Abraham, his belief in God, as righteousness. So when you believe in God, you have right standing. When you believe in Jesus, you have right standing with God. Amen. How we speak makes an appeal to someone's heart and mind to make a decision. People watch your body language. People know if you're even interested in what they're saying. If all of a sudden they're looking down at their cell phone, or looking away when you're talking. I'm an eye contact person. Yes. When somebody's talking, you have my undivided attention. But I had to train myself to do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How we speak makes an appeal to someone's heart and mind to make it. I heard this quote this week, something I read. You won't be able to help someone make a decision if you haven't. Sean, they know if you're talking out of both sides of your mouth. Yes, they, do. Yes, they, do. they know if Jesus is just an ATM machine. You just come when your behind's in trouble, somebody's got a problem, and you make a withdrawal. He knows if you're a Taco Bell Christian. <laughs> well, I'm, I want it now, and I want it my way. But when you get around somebody that's on fire, right, Pete liked that one. When you get around somebody on fire, when they're talking, you might not be listening, but boy, it's hitting you right in the chest. Yeah. And then you start going, man, I don't even want to listen to this, but for some reason, it's making an appeal to my heart. It's making an appeal to my mind. That's the anointing of the Holy Spirit. See, Tony will reach people that will never talk to Randy. So my job, if Tony's sitting in front of me, like Hans and Franz, we're here to pump you up. <laughs> it's a rough crowd tonight. <laughs> I know you're not going to see this till Sunday night. But pray for me. <laughs> We're trying to get some milk out of this cow. She's fighting us. So let's take a look at the Bible and see how important what we say is. When someone makes a decision about how they talk, it propels them into God's work. The moment Lauren and Randy say, you know what, God, everything I say from today on is only going to bring you glory. <laughs> Woo! Lauren just said, I didn't say that, Randy. <laughs> but Lauren just said, but he should. Yes. I want to jerk some slack out of your chain tonight. From this day forward, you don't say anything that doesn't glorify God. Let's just get radical, man. Yeah, yeah. Let's, just, let's just go crazy faith. If you don't set a standard, you won't keep your mouth shut. Right. There he is talking about our mouth shut again. Some of you need a four by four to get you to listen. Is that in the Bible, Ren, about my mouth can desell or propel or propane? I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> oh, your mouth can bring some propane to your life. And I'm not talking about the gas guy. <laughs> Professional pain. Mm -hmm. 
Have any of you let something slip out of your mouth, went mobile and hostile? And who did it bring pain on? Of course. Yes. And if you could have just, Mike, if we could have just walked away. After today, some of you are going to think before that chainsaw mouth of yours. I tell people, I tell people all the time, if you hear the chainsaw running, don't try to grab it. <laughs> Some of you, somebody's chainsaw mouth fires up and you're like, ah, ah, ah. you got to get involved. Are we having a good time tonight? Oh, some scripture. I'm sorry. The holy ones here. If you don't have scripture, you in trouble. Randy has to have a lot of scripture. Isaiah, ooh, Old Testament. I'm going to go old school on you tonight. We're talking about speaking <clears throat> propels you one way or another. How many of you actually said something, you knew it was wrong, and as it came out of your mouth, it was like in slow motion? I mean, you were just... Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Don't say it. Then you won't go. He, uh, oh, oh. I don't know what language that is. But it's funny. Isaiah 6, 1 through 8. Isaiah 6 was a prophet. Oh, you're going to like this. I guarantee, like Louisiana hot sauce, I guarantee. Isaiah 6, 1 through 8. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord, high and exalted, seated on a throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphim, each with six wings. With two, they covered their faces. With two, they covered their feet. And with two, they were flying. And they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is filled with His glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and the threshold shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. Now here's Isaiah experiencing an encounter with God. See, you should be encountering God every day or your life's going to be boring. Amen. I do not drink coffee. <laughs> I do not drink soda. I do not drink iced tea. You would be in trouble. This is just pure little old excited Randy. Because I love this stuff. Here's Isaiah. Woe to me, I cried. I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Verse 6. Then one of the seraphim flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from the altar. Some of you need your mouth touched yes. by some fire. Yes. With it, he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin is atoned for. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here I am, Lord, send me. There's something about people that have an encounter with the fire of God that when it touches their mouth, it completely changes their appeal of what they talk about. All of a sudden, now they're saying, Lord, send me. One starfish, Jack, 
You start praying and God will start sending. He'll put you on that shore and you're not going to be the gray-haired old guy saying, eh, eh, eh. <laughs> you're going to be the little boy. It's going to make a big difference to this one. See, we made church too complicated. It's about crowds and numbers and all kinds of people. No, it's about you reaching the lost. Amen. One at a time. Amen. An encounter with God will change how you talk and empower your walk with Him to reach people. Now, Missy, a lot of times at our house church on Wednesday nights in Klamath, she has a parallel Bible with the message, and she was sharing some of that on Wednesday. So I think it kind of got on me because I looked up this 6.5 in Isaiah. So 6.5 says, whoa, whoa. But I'm going to read to you in the message. Isaiah, just 6.5. I said, doomed. It's doomsday. This is Isaiah when he's in the presence of God. He said, doomed. It's doomsday. I am as good as dead. This is the Message Bible. Every word I have ever spoken is tainted. Does what come out of your mouth, is it tainted? Is it tainted? James says you can't have fresh water and salt water come out of the same fountain. Remember, you're speaking for Jesus. Every single thing you say, you represent Jesus. Well, Randy, maybe I was just talking to myself. Well, quit talking to yourself like that. Because somebody might be listening. Every word I have ever spoken is tainted, blasphemous. Blasphemous. Even. And the people I live with talk the same way. You know, a young man walked in here after all you left last weekend. You know, when you guys all walk out that door, it's amazing who comes walking in. And he waited against that back wall till you guys left. And he said, Randy, I need you to pray for me. And he wept and wept. And this guy, you could tear his ears off and he wouldn't cry. But this is what I told him. I said, if you want to soar with eagles, you've got to quit hanging out with turkeys. Mm -hmm. yes. See, what was happening is Isaiah said right here, and the people I live with talk the same way, using words that corrupt and desecrate. All it takes is one person in your life with a corrupt mouth and a mouth that desecrates and it will slowly poison you. You've got to be very careful what you listen. Well, Randy, it's my family. I know, but you need to start speaking a different way. Yeah. Yeah. You need to start speaking life. And it will change the atmosphere. <clears throat> Using words that corrupt. And here I have looked God in the face. Same verse, 6, 5. The king, God of the angel armies. Some of you have not been spending enough time in a quiet place. No distraction. Saying, God, light me up. The Azusa Street Revival that started at Bonnie Bray House, I actually sat in the closet that the pastor was sitting in when that revival poured out, and it was about two by three. Now, see how easily people are looking off of me, looking there. Don't do that. Don't do that. I'm not reprimanding you. But if Satan can pull your attention off yeah. and you're looking the other way, you've got to stay focused. Yeah. Amen. 
I always say Satan comes into your life with a trash can lid and a ball peen hammer. Yeah, he does. And Tony, he keeps hitting that trash can lid till you look back and he goes, that's what it takes. You have no time in the time we're living in to be distracted. None. When your mouth or speech has an encounter with the fire of God, you speak to people change. Let me read that one more time. And you know what? We're like two minutes away from an altar call. That right there is not by chance. Not, and that's not speaking against the lady. But I've been doing this for 33 years. <clears throat> Satan will do whatever he can to get you out of this building. Yeah. 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 And keep you out there. Mm -hmm. Now I know Sam, <clears throat> Sean, he's ministering to her. But the more I spoke, the more that pain in her body started to magnify. Mm -hmm. And then it took over her mind. Yes. I've got to go out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I gotta lay down. Yeah. She and I didn't know that. Sean just said she kept saying, "I gotta go lay down." There's warfare, man. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. When your mouth or speech has an encounter with the fire of God, your speech to people will change. And you will tell God, here am I, Jack, send me. But boy, if the only time you think about God is if Randy's slapping you around on a Saturday, or you're in a house church, it's not going to work. It's got to be every day, 24-7. Every day, 24-7, not what your spouse is doing, not what your mom or your dad or your boyfriend or your girlfriend or your children or your grandchildren, right. they're not going to be standing before the Lord with you. Mm -hmm. no. You're going to be there one-on-one -on -one with Jesus, and he's going to ask for an account. Now, let me tell you something. The harvest is coming in rapidly. We try to see it in the church, but God is actually bypassing. He said judgment will begin in the house of God. He said Ichabod will be written. My presence has departed. So now God is going out quickly into the highways and byways. And the book of Acts says they'll just call on the name of Jesus and they'll be saved. That's how quickly it's going to happen. So you have a choice today. You have a decision to make. Either speak for God or don't. Either speak for God or go the other direction. See, because the enemy is going to let us think, Tony... I can blaspheme people with one side of my mouth and then I can tell them God loves them out of the other side. <clears throat> well, I don't know if I want to live to that standard. You can't. You can't. Only the Holy Spirit in you can. Right. Yeah. You are designed to be the most pumped up, motivated person that anybody ever meets. Amen. I'm, I'm serious. Amen. Yes. Scars and all. Some of you got so many scars, you should be even more pumped up. Because you're still alive. That's right. <laughs> Amen on that one. Amen. But the cares of this life will begin to choke you out. 
Paul said, forgetting those things behind, I strain forward. We're living in a time, if I'm going to come to church, I want to be challenged in love. Amen? Amen. Good job. I don't want to come to church and play <laughs> patty cake. That's not what it's about. I need something that's going to challenge me to watch my mouth and go out and try to win the world for Jesus. So we're going to pray a prayer right now here for you to receive Christ. Romans 10, 9 says, believe in your heart, confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and you'll be saved. And right now you're going, well, Randy, I don't have it all figured out. Well, you've heard the word tonight. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men to myself. So we've been lifting up the name of Jesus tonight. So that's what's drawing you, not Randy, not what I'm saying, but what the Holy Spirit is speaking to you. So we're going to pray a simple prayer with you all over the world. This week, people will be getting saved. And so uh, just, just take a minute um, to pray this prayer with us. Just repeat after me. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus I, believe I believe that you hung on a cross, that you hung on a cross and, that you died and that you died and paid for my sins. And paid for my sins. Jesus, Jesus I, believe I believe that you rose again, that you rose again on the third day. On the third day. Jesus, Jesus, I ask you, I ask you into, my heart, into my heart as my Lord, as my Lord and Savior. And Savior. Jesus, Jesus, I love you. I love you. Amen. Amen. Now, we just want to close with this, those online. If you're opening a house church, make sure you put the heart emoji on our Facebook page. Um, use the video as an altar call and have a discussion about it. it it's, it's that simple. So uh, we love you guys. And uh, I tell you what, this week I tapped into your prayers. I can feel people praying for me all week long from all over the world. So no, we're praying for you, but we need your prayers for Chilliquin, Oregon. Amen. That it's been prophesied over this city that a revival would start here that would touch the state of Oregon. That's, that's what we're gunning for. We don't want just the town, we want the state. Amen. And Oregon gets saved, watch out. That's right. You know, awesome things. So we declare those things so they'll happen. Amen. Amen. Love you guys. See you next week.